Hello and welcome to this brand new series on how to use Courseplay. So I'm going to be doing several videos, several tutorial videos on how to use Courseplay. We're going to start off with the basics of how to install it, where to get it from, what it offers, um, and the controls and, and all the settings and menus. We're going to go through that in this episode. I'm just going to show you how to get started. But then eventually over time, as the series progress and the next episodes come out, and also when Courseplay develops, because it is still in early development stage, it has progressed quite a bit from when it first came out. We are at uh, version 7.0.023. Um, and it's definitely changed, and a lot of it's been for the better. When it first started off, I was a little bit skeptical of how it changed. I will be straight with you, but right now, I have to say, they are making great strides in the right direction for me. So I thought it would be a perfect time right now to show you the new course play for FS22, how it works, and hopefully by the end of this series, you'll be able to use course play and all its features. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to download it. So with it being in early development stage, it's going to be still on GitHub at the moment. It's not on ModHub right now. It's still in development. So things will be changing. There's always a lot of updates. You'll notice that probably every three to four days, they're popping out an update for it. Uh, so make sure you can always, always come back to this website to check. Now, the link for this website will be in the video description. So make sure you hit that link and you'll come to this page. Now, when you're on the page, it'll show you that, that you've got releases just here and it'll tell you the latest version. Right now, we're on 0.23 as I call it, but it is version 7.0.0.23, but mainly it's 0.23. So what you need to do is click this here, it'll load up and then it'll give you um, any change. Uh, if, if there's a change log, it'll put it in here. You can also have a look in discussions as well. I always recommend going into there because that shows you quite a lot of information of maybe um, anything that's coming along. Um, but Right now, all you need to do to download it is click this file here. And then what you'll notice is it'll start downloading. And then all you need to do is put that in your mod folder like normal um, and load up the game and make sure you activate course play. So what I'll do now is I'll jump in game and we'll go through setting it up. Right, so welcome to the game. Um, I'm currently on comms and this is the map that I'm going to be doing this series on just because it makes sense. A lot of people are playing it right now. So what better map to show off the features of course play uh, because a lot of people are going to want to be using it on course play. Um, unfortunately, it is raining though, so that's always a, a bit of a problem, but do you know what? It doesn't matter. At least we've got a nice rainbow to have a look at. So, the first thing I want to do is uh, talk to you about the actual menus um, and uh, what the, basically the controls and how to understand the course plate um, and, how it, and how it works, basically. So the first thing you're going to do is bring up your main menu and in here what you'll notice is you've now got probably this tab that you've already had before from the AI uh, standard in uh, from Giants in FS22, so you can use the workers before previously in this. This is now going to be for course play as well. But then you've got this extra one here, which is vehicle settings, and this is specific for the vehicle that I'm currently in. So I'm in the 714 Vario. In here, you can show and uh, show the courses as so in the field, you'll have the option to show it uh, for just the start and the stop, which is what I usually tend to do. But you can also show all waypoints as well. Um, then it goes open hood with mouse. I have, have this activated. Now we'll come back to this in a second because currently right now, if you've got uh, auto drive, which I do, if you're playing with course plate and auto drive, uh, then I would recommend having this to deactivate it, which I'll show you exactly in a second what, that, what, I, what I mean by that because I'll show you how it works better. Uh, to be honest, a lot of these options here, you won't be changing, but I'm just trying to talk you through what it is. So stop at the end, basically, at the end of the, the job, at the end of the course, he will stop. So only turning on the field is, is uh, really good to have activated, I think, um, especially if you've got collisions. So maybe you've got hedges that are collisions or even trees on the edge of the fields, which does happen on, on comms, and you might find that. Um, and if you're running a, uh, let's say you've got a cultivator that's not the best at turning, um, it's quite hefty, it's quite beefy, then I'd recommend to have this activated. Avoid driving in the fruit is really good. It's, it, visually, it's obviously there for you if you're not playing with uh, crop destruction on anyway, uh, but I'd, I'd have this activated. It's set to activated as default anyway, so I, I'd recommend keeping it like that. Uh, allow reverse of path, pathfinding, uh, pretty straightforward in what it's saying. Pathfinding basically is when um, there's an algorithm inside a uh, course plate and the same for auto drive as well, where it will pathfind a certain point in the field to try and uh, get to the maybe the first waypoint or, or get to a certain waypoint. And if it's trying to turn around and it might notice um, a collision, for example, that's, that's part of its pathfinding. Uh, now, fold tool, tool at course end, I have activated. Now, raise tools, I always leave this to late, and I lower the tool early. Now, the reason I do this is because, let's say it's going on its up and down runs in a, co in a, in a course, and, you're, and it's uh, just about to get to the point where it's going to drop, uh, let's say, a cultivator, 
you want it to drop early so you don't miss bits. Um, and I always think it's better to lift it up at the end of the row late for the same reason, so it doesn't miss bits. So I always recommend having that to late and that to early, the opposite way to how it's at default. Now, I never changed any of this. I've always left this uh, pretty much how it is. Now, you can change these horizontal uh, tool offsets eventually. Uh, if you're using a mower, for example, that hangs off the right-hand side of your tractor or the left-hand side, uh, then these things will come into uh, play, but I will show them in more detail eventually. Now, we're not going to be using multi-tools in this, but this is, again, for any convoy. Um, if you're using, doing a big harvest or anything like that, uh, some of this stuff will uh, come into effect eventually over time. Now, the speeds, again, I leave as default, and currently I've got it set to... Uh, kilometers an hour now the reason to do that is when you're trying to set up the width of an equipment and if it hasn't detected it itself um, it will show it in feet if you're running in miles per hour in your game settings however if you run in your game settings in kilometers an hour it'll show the tool width in meters which is what probably a lot of people are used to it's a shame i can't change um, to meters and miles per hour uh, it's either or so whilst using course play um, if you want to just make sure that you can see everything in meters, I recommend using kilometers per hour. Um, when you've got everything set up and all your courses are saved for the, the map you're playing on, it's probably fine then to obviously switch back um, to uh, miles per hour, but then keep in mind that you might need to convert if you're going to do anything else from feet to meters. Uh, and that's pretty much it for that settings. So if we go to global settings now, uh, this is for all the settings, all the, all the equipment, um, anything in general that you're using. So... Show all active courses set to deactivated. It really doesn't matter what you want on that. It's just basically, as it says, it's going to either show all the active courses or it isn't. Um, it really is just preference, that one. Uh, course play driver wages is important. Depends how you want to play the game. Personally, I try and keep this around 50%. It does take quite a lot of money from you. It is uh, a costly uh, endeavor to have a worker on your farm. But I also like a suggestion that was from uh, a guy called Adam. He's an admin in my Discord. He basically said that uh, he sets it to zero, but then he simulates having a worker on the farm and then he'll pay him like a monthly wage. So he kind of plays a bit of role play there and that's also also a good option. So this, this here is uh, directly for you to choose. You can go down to zero and all the way up to 500% if you're made of money and you don't mind throwing it away. So I'm going to keep that at 50. Now automatic repair, I have this to off. I like to re repair my um, tractors myself, but you can set it where it will automatically repair if it gets below a certain percentage. Now, gamepad friendly HUD is a bit of a new thing. Um, I will come back to it in a second, but if you're like me and play with an Xbox controller or sometimes with a steering wheel that maybe you've got an Xbox controller together, uh, then these things are really useful. Uh, but I will show you the HUD in a second. There's a difference between the user interface and the HUD. There's two uh, separate uh, kind of course play tools that you can see whilst in the game and also then you have the settings menus like this now you can you can pretty much set course play going from either or so it again it just depends on what you prefer whilst playing uh, what stands out for you as uh, the most easiest way for you to access course play while you're obviously in game or if you don't mind jumping into the menus it, it really is down to preference but the one thing that is good now um, is you have the option uh, whereas before you pretty much just had the one course play menu whereas now you've got the uh, user interface you've got the hood and you've also got the menus that we're looking at currently so these two again pathfinder settings i don't change these ones at this point here i'll, I'll leave them as standard now this one is where you've got folders now currently i have a few folders set up just as an example now these have these have been drawn from my other save game if you've been watching my series on calvin you'll notice that i've been playing um on 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 the map itself and i've got a few folders each each one for a field now i recommend having it set so it's organized in that sense so it, maybe all your courses uh, are in categories of fields so each folder is a field number and then in there you've got a bit of information when I'm saving a course, I usually like to state the size of the equipment that I've used. So for this, it's an 18 meter spread for lime. So that tells me that this course is set up for an 18 meter spreader for lime. Pretty straightforward, but it also uh, keeps it organized in, in a sense that I know that I've got an eight meter row. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I like it that, but again, it really just depends on how you want to set this up. This is all down to preference, but I will show you in a minute how to save um, courses, how to um, uh, create folders in a second. So they're the main uh, options right now in here. We will come back to this one in a second when we want to set the course up. Now, the other thing I want to point out is controls. So you do have controls in here. Uh, if you scroll down to, so you'll look for CP, always starts with CP, so that's AD for auto drive. 
and then we've got course play CP here um, and also start and stop driver is an option in here for control H but again I don't really use that I use the hood itself but these are there and it's a good option to have uh, so if you want to change you can also you cannot always customize it so quickly what I just want to point out is if you're using auto drive at the same time of course play so currently if you are using auto drive and you bring up your menu and you're in editing mode and you want to move one of the nodes like you would normally do uh, to maybe adjust it you can't currently do that because of the fact the course play um, hood here just keeps popping up so to stop this what you need to do is jump into your vehicle settings and you're going to be looking for open hood with mouse and you want to deactivate that like I was talking about earlier and then you want to save it so now that we've deactivated this the next thing we need to do is go into controls so I'm going to go to controls I'm going to stay in the keyboard because what I want to do is backspace this one out here um, and then at the moment I've got this now set back to uh, delete sorry this one here I've, I've uh, defaulted that again uh, so that's what it should look like which is delete so now what I want to do is because we've actually just gone to keyboard controls and we've backspaced this one out, it shouldn't conflict anymore, but we need to still bring it up. Now I'm using Xbox control, like I said, so I just want to show you that you can actually um, put the open mini GUI on a different command. So I'm going to just pick left stick for the meantime. Um, again, you might want to pick something else. Uh, it's already used again in load palettes and stuff. Uh, to be honest, like I said, I'd set this up to come something completely different on the keyboard. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But right now, just for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to put it as left stick on a controller. So you can, if you wanted to, assign it to some kind of uh, controller um, and it still should work. So if we just save the controls here and back out, what we're going to notice now is I've still got my command on my uh, controller, Xbox controller, to bring auto drive in and out, which is uh, left back and up on the D-pad. Uh, but also if I have that open at the same time and then press left stick, you can see that course play now is opening up here, but I can still move these dots. So just keep that in mind. That's a nice little tip there. Um, and also it, until it's changed, it will be fixed at some point anyway. So it's, it probably will be irrelevant. You might be watching this video uh, a few weeks, a few months after this uh, uh, video came out. And then again, it's going to be irrelevant at that point. But right now, it's good to know that you can still have both of these running without having that problem. Because it is a problem, you won't be able to use or drive properly um, if you don't change that command. So, with that being said, the next thing to do, naturally, is to try and set up a course. Now, like I said, you've got this menu here that you can move um, and you can bring up in and, in and out, which I think is really good. Uh, but what we want to be doing is setting up a course, probably in another field. So I'm just going to jump to a tractor that I've put in a field with a cedar. Um, and we're going to try and set up field uh, let me just look at the field number uh, field two that's what we want to be doing so before we get set up with this i just want to point out that what i've just done again unfortunately needs to be changed for each vehicle so because it's in vehicle settings you're gonna to have to do this in each one of your vehicles so we need to deactivate press save um, we go back now we should be able to bring it up in and out. So you, all you got to do, it won't take long, but if you've got like five vehicles, just make sure you do it on all five. Uh, when you buy a new one, do it on all five until it's fixed. Right, so what we need to do now, now we're in the vehicle, we're looking at field um, two ahead of us, and we need to set this up. So I want to plant in this field some canola. I know it's raining, mind the rain. I know you probably won't be doing this in real life in the rain, uh, but we are just going to be doing it right now. So first thing I need to do is bring up the menu. We're going to go to the second tab here, which is the active worker tab. We're gonna press create job. Then we're gonna change go to to field work, but we want CP field, field work, so for course play field work. Then we're gonna select the target position, and it doesn't really matter as, where you put this as long as it's on the edge of the field. And I'd always recommend going clockwise, just because if you're harvesting, your pipe's always gonna be on the left-hand side, um, so it's probably better to have your pipe um, on the side that it can be accessed to. Uh, whereas if you're going anti-clockwise, your pipe's gonna be inside the field um, and if you've got crop destruction on, that's going to cause you an issue. So I always recommend going clockwise. So now that that's placed and we're heading in this direction, which is clockwise, we're going to open up um, the course generator here. Now, I know it's six meters. Um, if it wasn't six meters, there is no auto detect button currently. Uh, you can change it in the GUI that I've showed you, but you can also change it in here. But we're going to just set it at six meters. You manually adjust that. Uh, then you've got field center up and down. Uh, you can take it to spiral, racetrack, lands. Um, I always have it on up and down. There is different methods to that. Uh, 
again, you can try it out and see which one you you think's best for you. But personally, I just I keep it quite simple. I I go on up and downs. Uh, a lot of the times, though, I'm having sharp corners. I find that sharp corners mean that you miss less bits. So I do prefer that. And then I also have a headland. So the headland is how many times around the field it's going to go before it starts its up and down rows. I always think it depends on the size of equipment you've got. This is only six meters, so I could quite easily do four, and that's going to leave the the, the tractor and the cedar enough space to turn around on its, on its up and down rows. So I'm going to set this to four. The headland overlap, I'll keep it 7%. Again, the overlap is there for... Um, it means that you can miss less bits as well because it's overlapping on the headlands as it goes through. So if you're doing smooth cornings, for example, you could probably up that to about 10%. But remember that it's going to overlap, so it will take a little bit longer because you're actually getting less field space used on each pass, but only on the headlands. Now, roast to skip is really useful if you've got a, a big cedar, big tractor that's not turning very well and probably can't make that sharp turn to come back on itself. You might want to skip a row and then it'll jump, keep jumping rows, but then when it's hit that, the end of that first pass, it will come back on itself and, and get all the rows it skipped. So I'm going to do that just to show you what that's like. We're just going to miss one row um, and we're going to put, uh, we'll leave that to be um, automatic on that. Uh, we're going to start on the actual center passes, which is the up and down rows, and then we're going to finish on the headland. So it will do the up and downs, and then it will finish on the headlands. Uh, we haven't got multiple tools. We don't need an island bypass on this uh, because there is no trees or anything in the field. If you did see, know there was a tree in the field, for example, island bypass is really useful. Um, you can set it to simple. You can set it to no bypass, or you can set it to circle. We'll keep it on circle because at the end of the day, it's not going to detect anything, so we don't need to worry about that. But circle means that if there was a tree, it'd go around the tree, and then it'd carry on on its row or, or uh, headland, depending on where the, the tree was. Uh, field margin is good if you want to try and make a bit of a buffer. It does state there uh, there's a buffer around the worked area. Negative ones uh, enlarge the worked area, so that'll mean that the field will get wider. If you're plowing, this is really good for that. Um, whereas if you want to try and make a bit of a headland um, and uh, have a bit, like, you know, a bit more room for the hedgerow, for example, then uh, you could probably turn this up instead of making it negative. But we're just going to keep it at zero because right now the, all the fields are pretty much set pretty well by Oxy. We don't need to adjust them anyway. So now that we've set this up, all we need to click here is generate field work course. And what you'll notice is you can see just behind here, if we close this now, you can see that a course has been generated and this is the course it's going to take. So it's going to start here and this is what this means and it's going to end here. So you can see the headlands, how they're different from the up and down rows because they're kind of going around the field. Now where you can see that the up and down rows are, are completely different. They are straight lines where it's going through the field. Uh, you can also make out because he's going to start here, he's going to go up, he's going to come, uh, sorry, he's going to go that way um, and he's missing a row each time. Um, and that's why it looks quite overlapped. If we didn't choose that feature, he wouldn't have that. But again, that always is just determined on how uh, the size of equipment basically you're using. If it's big and it doesn't turn very well, I recommend skipping a row just because it'll make its life easier in the field. Um, and actually, it'll be quicker because it'll be the turns won't be as, as harsh and he won't have to keep reversing and, and maneuvering better. He might be able to make that angle a lot better now. So... With that being said, this field is set. But what we want to do is we want to save this. So if we ever come back to field two again with this six meter cedar, we can always use it and we don't have to do that again. We can just press uh, load course and go. So to do that, we need to hit this here. It looks like an auto drive route, to be honest. It's the three waypoints and the lines connecting them. Now on that, what I recommend is creating a new folder. Now I'm going to create it just for the purpose of this video. So we're going to create a new folder and we're just going to call it test because that's technically what we're doing um, and there's the folder now you can go and change the folder name by changing the mode here and then you get these options which is rename entry delete entry or move entry now you can rename this click it rename it but we don't want to do that we want to change the mode again because we're in now we're, we're in the, the mode that's allowing us to create folders or save courses so I want to save this course. So all I need to do is make sure I'm highlighted on test, for example, save course. I need to press activate because that's basically saying, are you sure you want to choose this folder, which we do? And then I'm just going to call it six meter cedar. Now we know it's already going to be, for example, if it was set to a folder that was field three or field five or whatever, you know that you didn't need to call it field five because it's in that folder. 
and then we save it and that's it it's job done now what we can do if we wanted to is we could actually clear this course now the way you do that is you can't do it in any other the menu you can't do it in here you can't do it in here and you also can't do it in the HUD or the GUI that shows up in the game you have to go back to this one which is where you load your courses and you have to press here clear current course and now there is no course activated so if we go back to here it's completely disappeared but if we wanted to bring it up again all we'd have to do is jump into this vehicle like we currently are we go to here we pick test we click six meter cedar and we would press load course and activate and that's it job done so if we now go back to here you can see the course is now reloaded again dead simple so what we want to do you can either drive now to the first marker and because we've got it set up where it will show the start point and the and the where it ends which you can just make out in the distance there it says stop it does give you an indication of where it's going to start from so what we need to do is just i'd say about here is a perfect start point just give it a little bit of help in hand you don't have to do this you could have started up there but it's obviously going to kind of path find and it'll work it out it takes a little bit longer whereas if you're closer it's you know you're giving it a help in hand now i always think the best way you can start this this course off from in the menu from this menu here but i always think the best way to start this off is to bring up the hood this new hood that's come up uh, you can move it just hold left click on the mouse bring it around and put it wherever you want so i'm going to put it there currently uh, we've got working width set to six meters if you click here uh, it'll tell you the course so this one here is telling me the course this is telling me where we wanted to start from uh, you can either start from the first waypoint last waypoint the nearest waypoint but we want to start it from the first waypoint um, and if the click here as well this will bring up the vehicle settings if you click there this will bring up your global settings and this is your go button so these are your old offsets as well which you're not going to need to change right now so that changes the offset of the course to the left to the right for the uh, horizontal all the vertical would be up and down across the axis there uh, but right now we don't want to do that we just want to set first waypoint and pretty much go now what you'll notice is you'll start you'll unfold you'll get into the first point and then you'll start seeding it also is pretty cool because it tells you the amount of points that are on the field left to do so right now he's on point one as he starts the course which he's technically about to do he's dropped it down and you'll notice that we are actually seeding um, you can see that the number starts going up so this is really good because it gives you an indication of how long it's going to take the course to be completed it doesn't tie in time but it gives you an indication of the points it needs to go through so 2600 is is quite big it is it's not massive but it is big enough to know that you're probably going to leave this an hour maybe an hour uh, I'd say about an hour if I was guessing so that's that done so right now we can jump out and I can show you that it's not me driving it's a dude um, in a shirt looks like he's about to go out for tea he must be meeting the missus after um, but yeah he's obviously doing this course for us um, and as you can see in a minute you'll see that he's going to miss a, a six meter uh, row and he's going to jump onto the next one after it because we've asked him to which made his turning angle a lot easier so we'll leave him doing that but there is one more thing i want to show you before i end this video this is again just the basics of how to use course play but i do like to go in depth if you've watched my tutorials before i do like to go in depth i don't want to miss things out i'd rather the video be longer than shorter if, especially if i'm missing things out for everyone right so i'm currently just in this area on the map it's a, a grass field that's like hidden from um the, the, it doesn't actually show you on the map as a field number it's uh, just it looks like the wood woodland area on the gps bit but right here there's a really good area where you can mow so what happens if you wanted to do a course plate on this area and you want to kind of harvest the grass and uh, yeah dos maybe do some baling uh, well what you can actually do it's really clever is you can um, create your own course and it will generate from how you've mowed it or the way you've gone around the field um, and set that as a boundary so what I'm going to just quickly do is I'm going to go around this course I'm going to turn this on I'm going to go around and start mowing um, around the edge of what I want it to do so I'll quickly just do this I'll cut back in when it's done and I'll show you and then we'll generate a course right so there we go I've done the boundary of the field of where I want it to start uh, generating a course from and it's really good because we've got a tree in the middle so what I'll first show you is show you without it bypassing the tree but then I'll show you if and how to change it so it can bypass that tree so it doesn't hit it um, so as you can see that's the uh, harvested area that I've done you can see that it says ready to harvest it but then around where I've just mowed it's obviously harvested so we need to go into our course generation like we normally would make sure we're in the in the vehicle though um, 
we need to create a job and we're going to go to course play field work like we normally would uh, and have on the previous course we're then going to open it up uh, 10 meters what we're at we'll do three headlands in fact we'll just do two um, we'll keep it simple um, we want to start on the headlands and we want to make sure this says no bypass and then we want to just generate the field work course so there we go you can probably just make it out it's actually done the course dead simple look at that from the boundary we've just done and then you could obviously save that um, I've actually saved it as a folder called Woodlands and I'm actually using this as an area where I can uh, do some grass work um, now obviously with the tree in the middle you can always go back in and just change that to circle generate your course again uh, what you'll notice is a circle appears because that's what I've done in my personal save game and again it will bypass that as well so it's really useful um, you don't have to worry about the tree you can always chop it down if you want to uh, but yeah it will bypass it but I just thought I'd quickly show you that it doesn't need a field number you can generate your field yourself even if it's plowing or some kind of field work go and plow the edge of a field make it custom to you you could plow this together you could even generate a field course from field one um, let's just actually do it field one um, this bit in the middle let's see what happens so 10 meters on field one um, number of headlands probably want a few if it's 10 meters um, we're going to actually do a bypass we're going to just make it simple and see what happens so there you go now it's just generated a course in field one for us with 10 minutes and as you can see it automatically bypasses that bit in the middle now if you plowed that and made it all in one big field without that in the middle that wouldn't be there it automatically noticed that that's no longer a problem and it'd make a nice uh, course for you so as you can tell course play is really useful and it's quite clever and it will help you out and it does simulate just like auto drive having a worker on the farm and if you also use course play and auto drive together it really does enhance the game and i can't re recommend it anymore auto drive is great for creating a network of someone getting from a to b uh, but course play is great for actually doing all the field work so thanks for watching hopefully you have enjoyed this first episode hopefully you found it informative like i said more episodes will be coming with more information really do appreciate it please give the video a thumbs up and if you're new don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on farming simulator